We are thrilled to be here with you today, share with you what God has been doing and what God's getting ready to do. Um, I want to share just real briefly, uh, it reminded me, it wasn't necessarily part of what I usually share, but with BGMC, we did a um, outreach when we were still under the tent. This is years ago. And we were going to advertise to show the movie um, it, The Incredibles. And so we were preaching at some other church that morning. Uh, the day before, we did activities out in a big park. So as we're getting close to the tent, there was a line outside like two or three blocks long trying to get into the tent. We had over 800 show up that day. And we shared the Incredibles, the most incredible being Jesus Christ. But we used BGMC materials, and 500 children gave their hearts to the Lord that afternoon. So we believe in BGMC. Your coins, your dollars go a long way to reach children for the glory of God. But I also want you to, I don't know how many of you probably have your a refrigerator uh, papered in prayer cards. We believe in prayer cards um, that you're reminded to pray for us. Um, I'll just briefly tell you, there was a particular time in 2006, my daughter and I walked into the house. Uh, there were two men in the house in the process of robbing our home. They tied us up and put us in the floor. While we were, I was, my face was in the carpet, I began to pray and I said, Lord, when we're home, we give out prayer cards, and people promise to pray for us. So send somebody to the refrigerator right now, Lord. Quicken someone's heart to pray for us. And I just felt that God assured me. We were, they walked out with about uh, $15,000 worth of stuff. You never think you have anything to you add up. Um, they walked out the front door. We were unharmed, and I sat up, Destiny had a friend with her, and I said, girl, stuff, stuff, and stuff doesn't matter, but we matter, and God has taken care of us today. I just knew in my heart somebody was praying. We came home in 2007. There were two or three people said there was something, a time particular, but it wasn't specific. I knew I would know when it was specific. In 2013, we were in Puerto Rico sharing at a church. And an uh, elderly lady walked up to me afterwards, and she said, they call me Pastora. She said, Pastora, when did this happen? I said, 2006. She said, what month? I said, August. She opened her Bible, showed me where she had written, August the, uh, 6, 2006. She began to pray at about 9 o'clock at night to 4 o'clock in the morning. She said, for a missionary and her daughter in crisis. I began to cry, and I said, thank you, first of all, for, being, for knowing the voice of God. Second of all, for being obedient to the voice of God. I believe we're alive today. So when we ask you to pray for us, we're serious. All of your missionaries, remember us and lift us up in prayer. It is so good to be with you this morning. And I had to look in my calendar, and I couldn't remember the last time we were here. And I got looking. It was five years ago. Boy, f time flies when you're having fun. I'm telling you. But um, as Pastor shared with you just briefly, we are in transition. For the last 23 years, we have, well, actually for almost 25 years, our focus has been Columbia. And when we got to Columbia in the year 2000, uh, we had 400, about 400 Assembly of God churches in the nation. Today, I'm here to report to you we have over 1,600 churches to the glory of God. We have seen God do absolutely incredible things, and uh, revival is breaking out all over the nation, and we're just, we're, we've just been privileged to be a part of what God's been doing in Colombia. Back in about 2020, I think it was, our Greg Mundus, who's over all the world, who was over all the world, world missions, he's just now retired, had uh, sent out an email to all the missionaries around the world. He said, I want you to pray and fast 40 days. He said, I believe God wants to do some new things. Well, we did that. We took that very seriously. We went to the Lord. We fasted for 40 days, and we felt like God was speaking to us about 
going to the nations. The Lord gave Dolores a word, say, I'm calling you to the nations, no longer just Columbia. And the Lord spoke to me and said, extend your tent pegs. And so that was 2020. And then last year, um, we just felt like the Lord said, okay, it's time. Now's the time. And so we began to transition leaving Columbia. You have no idea how hard it was leaving Columbia. My pastor's Americo was saved under my ministry. And he tells the story. He, he, he told this story when we were leaving, when he did the, the farewell, the despedida, they call it, the farewell when we were leaving. And he said, what he was sharing with the church, he said, now you have to understand, my father was killed. This was him. My father was killed when, he, when I was eight years old. And I was angry with God. When he was a teenager, he traveled Europe as a as a soccer player, a junior professional soccer player. He came back to Columbia and turned pro and uh, started, he made his way to our church. What had happened was we had a professional team in our city, and he was recruited by that team to be a part of that team. And so we would do stuff at the church. We would feed the ball players from time to time. And he said, I came to the church not because of Jesus, but because y'all had food. Hello. It works, whatever it takes to get him in, whatever it takes. And he said he started coming to the church. On a Sunday morning, he, he was there, and he said, Pastor Jack was preaching a message. The title of the message was, Who's Your Daddy? He says that I said, Who's Your Daddy, 43 times. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's his story, so I just leave it be. He said, that day, Jesus became my Savior, and Pastor Jack became my daddy. That was our farewell. Then he and his family and Pastor Chris from Tutau and his family drove three and a half hours to be at the airport at 1 o'clock in the morning when we were flying out. And Dolores said, I'll do just fine until those kids start crying. They grabbed our legs, looked up at us and said, Lito, Lita, you can't leave. That's what they called us, Lito and Lita. That's, gran that's short for grandma, grandpa, for uh, them. And they said, you can't leave. And they were crying. Again, we were a basket case. They're doing great. Church is growing. God's blessing, and they're doing incredible things. We're so very proud of our pastors there in Colombia. We went to Boyacá, which is where we focused. All of our ministry was up in Boyacá. When we first got there, it was 23 churches. Now there's over 90 churches, and all we can say is thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Gateway Church, because your support has made all that possible. Now, I say all that just to let you know that we are transitioning. We, are at, we have actually moved back. Well, we're, I think we're still in the process of moving. We still haven't got this all figured out yet. We've been in Columbia for 23 years. It's like, okay, what are we doing next? It's like we know what we're doing ministry-wise. It's trying to figure out where we're living. So be praying for us. We're looking for a house. We have no idea where. We just, she, I told the Lord, she's followed me all over the world for 44 years. I said, you can decide where. You follow me for 44 years, you can make this next call. And so we're looking to buy a home someplace. Right now we're living in Greenville, Tennessee here, and uh, just traveling from there. We're, we're itinerating these months. And our new focus now is we're, we're, we're part of what they call the Latin American and Car Caribbean Strategic Team. We travel all over Latin America and Caribbean, helping church planners help them develop their ministry, their calling, and whatnot. That's what we've done for all these years. And so we're just coming alongside young missionaries, coming alongside pastors all throughout the region and helping them develop their vision and how they're going to do it, what they're going to do. And, uh, and so that's what we're doing now. We also, we have four focuses. If you would, when you leave this afternoon or, yeah, this afternoon, when you leave this afternoon, pick up one of our brochures. It just tells you, gives you a little bit of an update what we're doing and stuff. But what we're focusing, we have four focuses. Number one is revival. How many of you know we need revival? Thank you for those three. I'll pray for the rest of you. I'm praying that you will leave here revived this morning. 
Number two is evangelism. People said to me, Jack, you're 68 years old. I don't look it. Where's my friends? Come on now. Where's my friends at? I'm 68 years old, and they said, Jack, aren't you supposed to be retiring? I said, first of all, where do you see in Scripture that we retire? I'm sorry, I don't find that in the Word. If you find it, let me know. Email me, whatever. But I don't find that in the Word. The other thing is, as long as there's one unsaved person in the world, hmm, I've got work to do. So, revival, evangelism, church planting, and pastoral care, pastoral or missionary care as we travel. Because what we've, what we've come to realize is we become mom and dad to a lot of people. And so as we travel and we visit our missionaries, we visit other pastors, different parts of the world, we just simply love on them, encourage them. And so you're going to help us do that through your prayers and through your continued financial, re financial support. We can't do it without you. We can't do it without you. I believe pastor's going to receive an offering later. And uh, that offering will go towards our next phase of ministry, traveling throughout the world. We're, we're, January, we're in Puerto Rico. February, we're in Nicaragua. March, we're in Colombia again. June, we're back in Colombia again. And then the end of the year, we'll be in Japan and Mongolia. We just got back from Sri Lanka where we did four weeks of uh, encounters for pastors and their spouses. And we just loved on some pastors, some hurting pastors throughout the nation of Sri Lanka. So we can't do it without you. We can't do it without you. We need your prayers. We need your support. And we say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, so much for the commercial. <laughs> now let's get into the word. I've been preaching the gospel now for about 45 years. I've had the joy of preaching the word of God all over the world. I've seen literally thousands of people come to Christ. I've seen people healed. I've seen the blinded eyes open, the deaf ears hear, the dumb began to speak. I've seen them carry them in in cots and dance out by the power of God. We return back to the U.S., and we struggle with our North American church. We love our church back home. But we struggle with what we see taking place in the local church. God wants to do something here. What I've come to realize, you don't need an encounter with Pastor Jack. I can't change your life. I can't even give you good help. What you need is an encounter with God. He's the only one that can show up and bring healing, bring deliverance, bring breakthrough, bring whatever you have need of. And I know that you've come here this morning with needs, all different types of needs. There's not a single one of us, and us included, that have come in this building this morning that don't have a need. And so what do we need to do this morning? I've got hundreds, thousands of messages I could preach, and I'm prepared. But what you need to experience this morning is not Jack Simon. You need to experience God. And he's as anxious for him to do in, in your life, more anxious than what you are. And so here... You need to understand something. Mm. The Spirit of God is here. Let me tell you about an experience I had some years ago. I was preaching at a church. I'm not going to say where. That's not important. But I was in a church. Well, i got to be honest. Pastor, it was as dead as dead could be. And when you, I mean, worship them. There was no worship. It was just they sang some songs. But there was no anointing. There was no presence. There was nothing there. And do you know how hard it is to preach behind that? It's like hitting a wall. And it was going nowhere. 
So I got up early the next morning, which is typically what I do every day. I get up early in the morning just spending time in the presence of the Lord. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what happened last night? And this is what he said to me. He said, that's your fault. He said, that's your fault. My fault? And I got into a little bit of an argument with the Lord. I know you've never done that. I said, how was that my fault? He said, because my anointing is upon you. You don't allow the atmosphere to change you. You change the atmosphere. Now, listen to me, church, because that's not just for Pastor Jack. That's for all of you. We keep talking about the darkness that's going on in our world, and I get it. I see it all the time, just like you do. But what we kind of come to realize is the anointing of God is upon you and I. We keep talking about, well, things need to change. Well, you know what? It starts with us. It starts in us and then through us. Now, as I was praying, I was asking, I had no idea what I was going to share with you today. Last night, I I had a, I just felt like the Lord was speaking to me about a passage of Scripture. So I want you to turn with me in your Bibles this morning to Isaiah chapter number 60. And you'll want to stick your finger in John chapter 14 too. So we're going to, Lord willing, we're going to get through both those passages. Isaiah chapter number 16, verse number 1. And this is what the word says, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hello. This is a prophetic word for you in your life. And you can sit there and just say, well, that's a good message, that's a good word. Or you can say, no, I I receive it. I'm going to let that light begin to burn in me. Verse number two, and here's, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness, the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you, upon you, upon. Verse number three, the Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see, they all, to, they all gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from afar, your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Church, it's time to arise and shine. I'm a revivalist. I'm passionate about the move of God. I'm passionate about the presence of God. I get up every single morning. I've been doing this for 30 plus years now. I get up every single morning and my passion is I just want to get in the presence of God. I don't need any music. Sometimes I put some music on. Sometimes I put my ear, my ear pods on, and I just have instrumental music. I don't want nothing with words. I just want to get into the presence. I got a revelation for you. You don't have to have it all together to get there. Because if that to be the case, I'd never get there. Okay? And here's, here's what we do. Even in church, we had great worship this morning. Y'all rock it. I love it. Y'all are great. But here's what most of you did. Maybe sang a few words. But here's what we do. We come knocking at the door of the throne room. And Jesus, our elder brother, comes to the door because he's already made it possible for you to enter in. He's already made it possible. By his blood, you have the ability, the capability to enter into the throne room of God. And so he comes to the door and he opens up the door and he says, come on in. Dad's waiting on you. 
And here's what we do. Really? Really? Dad is waiting on you. Bro, if I said to you, I've got a million dollars for you, tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock, you come by my house, i got a million dollars for you, what would you be doing? <laughs> You'd be there at 5.30, I'm sure. I'm there at 4. <laughs> but that's what God does with us. He says, I want to bless you. I want to do things in and through your life. But you've got to enter in. You've got to enter into the throne room. The problem with most of us is we look from a distance and we say, whoa. And we think about our sins. We think about how we don't deserve to enter in. And i got a revelation for you. None of us do. None of us deserve to enter in. But because of what Jesus did at the cross of Calvary, you have the joy and the privilege of entering into the throne room of God. Stop worshiping from a distance. When the pastor of the praise and worship team says, it's time to worship, you need to be the first one getting into the presence of God. But understand this, it's not just for Sunday mornings. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm traveling all the time. This morning was at the hotel. Early this morning, I woke up at 4.30. Grabbed me a shower, got dressed. Went downstairs, put my ear pods on because I don't want to hear nobody's noise. And found me a corner. I'm sure some people probably thought, this dude must be on drugs or something. Because I was in a corner all by myself. Just worshiping, getting into the presence of God. The scripture tells us, arise and shine. We live in a dark and hurting world. It doesn't take a whole lot to bring change. All it takes is me connecting with the Lord and allowing him to rule and reign in my life like he wants to do. And when I walk out, I'm walking in his anointing. I'm walking in his presence. I'm walking in his power. I can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Not because of Jack, but because of Jesus who's ruling and reigning in my life. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Quit talking about all the negative garbage that's going on. You're just feeding the devil. And begin to realize, wait a minute. I've been in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Whoo, come on. Come on. And when I walk out of that, hmm, I've got anointing upon my life. I've got an anointing upon my life. That's not arrogance. That's not cocky. That's reality, church. That's reality, church. You say, well, why didn't that happen to my... Have you been taking time to get into his presence? I thank God for your faithfulness to church. But if that's all you're doing, it ain't enough. Some of you are struggling in your lives so you don't know which way to turn. I'm telling you, all you have to do is get into his presence. Get into his presence. Quit playing church. I walked into a church one time. I scared him half to death, I think. I said, I'm sick of church. Can I be honest? I am. I'm sick of what we call church, church. Where is he in your life? Now, let's turn to John chapter 14. Now, if you're reading your Bible, your paper Bible, not all the versions have the red letters, but if you have red letter, you know that, what's that? What's the meaning of the red letters? The words of Jesus. John chapter 14, verse number 12. 
This is one of my favorite passages in all of the Bible. Most assuredly, I say to you, who's saying this? Okay, Jesus is saying, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Hello. Hello. The works that I do, he will do also. And here's the one that gets me. And greater works. I got to be honest, Pastor. I have struggled with that one for years. He says that I'm going to do greater things than he did. Is that not what your Bible says? Am I, am I, am I speaking the truth here? That's not Jack's words. Those are Jesus' words. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, what? What? Open up our understanding. Holy Spirit, open up our understanding. Open up our understanding. I have seen the blinded eyes open. I've seen them carry them in in cots and the power of God raise them out of their cots. This is my prayer. This is my prayer about every morning. Lord, I thank you that you've used me in all these different ways. But God, isn't it about time for your church, for Sally and Mike and Joe and every church to begin to do the same things? Let me just give you an understanding here. We need the Holy Spirit to empower us. Period. We can't do anything of ourselves. What we do is when we go into the throne room of God, get this, get this picture. Our Heavenly Father is seated on His throne. Jesus, the Scripture tells us, is at the right hand of the Father. The Heavenly Father went to the throne. Jesus went to be with His Father so that He could send the Holy Spirit that empowers us, empowers you and me, not just the pastors, not just the evangelists, not just the prophets and the apostles, but he empowers every born-again believer who's hungry to see God move in their lives. And then what, what you have to understand is the Father who's seated on his throne by the Holy Spirit, he empowers. Now, you got to get this. Everything, all God's power, all God's authority is made available to you and I as his kids. How many of you here got kids? How many of you here plan on leaving your kids something when you're gone? Well, I'm kind of thinking about it. It depends on how they treat me the next couple of years. Do you understand that the Heavenly Father, all of, his, all, all of His power, all of His authority is available to you as a child of His? What does that mean? Jesus tells, it what it, tells us what it meant. He said that, the, that you will do the same things that I've done. Now, let me ask you a question. What did Jesus do? Oh, oh, stop right there. Stop right there. Question. When was the last person you rose from the dead? I haven't done it yet. Well, d d d d d operative word, yet. I haven't either, yet. I've seen God do a lot of things, but I haven't seen the dead raised, yet. 
yet. What else did he do? He healed. He healed the sick. What was that? Deliverance. Set the captive free. Provided for the multitudes. He he rose. Mm. Guess what? You will too. If you're born again. Some of you will catch that sometime later on in the week. Jesus said that everything that he's done, we're supposed to do too. Now, my desire as a pastor is to see my folks begin to operate in the supernatural. Not just simply enjoy the supernatural in Sunday service. I love it. But you need to start walking in your anointing. You need to start walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to start laying hands on the sick. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Come on now. You need to begin to operate in the anointing that God has placed and made available for you. I'm convinced we can change the world. Armies won't change the world. Politics, I don't care what side of the fence you're on, ain't going to change the world. The only thing that can change our world is the glory of God and His power that relies or, or, or lies within His believers. So what, what if, what if I'm walking in my anointing and I'm changing my world, the people that God has put in my influence, and you do the same thing, and you do the same thing, and you do this, and you... You see, the problem is you're waiting on me and the pastor to come into your world. Because we have the anointing. You have the same anointing that I have. It's available to to you just as much as it is available to me. The question is, are you going after it? Are you going after it? Are you going after God? I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. You're here this morning. You are capable of hearing the voice of God and walking in obedience to accomplish his kingdom purposes in and through your life. Now, one more passage of Scripture, and I'm going to shut up, maybe. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse number 9. This is an incredible chapter in the scriptures. I would encourage you this afternoon when you get a break, when you get done eating, just find yourself a chair or something. Just sit down and just read this chapter and just ponder on it. Verse number nine. But I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Anybody here love the Lord? We'll pray for the rest of you. I want you, I want you, Paul's writing this passage of Scripture, and he's referring to a passage actually in Isaiah. He's quoting from a passage in Isaiah. And this is what he says. He says, I has not seen, nor heard, nor has come into the heart of man the things that God has already prepared for those who love him. Get this. He's saying, you can't even imagine the plan that God has for your life. You can't even grasp it. Had you said to me, for, I'm, I've, been serving, I've, been ser- I've been saved about 48 years now, been preaching the gospel 44, 45 years. If you had said to me 50 years ago, Jack, one day you're going to preach the gospel. You know what I would have said to you 50 years ago? Dude, you're spoken dope. Because that's what I was doing back 50 years ago. If you had said to me, Jack, one day you're going to plant churches around the world. Do what? What's a church? 
I didn't have a clue 50 years ago. Jack, you're going to see people healed through your ministry. I'm not Benny Hinn. But here we are, all these years after, and all these things I've seen, and so much more. And then the Lord says to me, and I ain't done yet. I got more. I got more. You can't imagine the plans that God has for your life right now. They're far more incredible than you can possibly imagine. You may think, well, I've got a good job. I'm making a good income. We got a nice home. It got a nice car, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying to his church, it's time to arise and shine. It's time to walk in your anointing to bring transformation into the world that we know needs to take place. Then he goes on to say this. How many of you here, if God told you he's got something special for you, would want to know what it is? Can I see your hands, please? I know there's a few of you you're not sure yet. It's okay. I don't know about you. If my heavenly father said to me, Jack, man, I got some stuff for you. Guess what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to be getting into the throne room to find out what that stuff is. Yo, Dad. But here's how he tells us how we're going to find out. Read number 10, verse number 10. But God has revealed them to us through what? His Spirit. Hmm. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The key to walking in the fullness, walking in the glory, walking in the anointing, is developing an intimate relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit. He's my best friend. I'm sorry, Dolores, you're just number two. She's okay with that. She's okay with that. You need to make the Holy Spirit your best friend. And the way we do that is spending time with him. How many of you here have friends? Can I see your hands, please? We'll pray for the rest of you. The scripture says to have friends, you have to be a friend. That's what Proverbs teaches us. So if you ain't got no friends, hmm, might need to take a good look inside. What do we do when we get with our friends? Talk, what else? Laugh, great, yeah. Have fun, yeah. What? Uh, yep, sometimes we cry together, yep. What else? Who said that? You're walking in the anointing, brother. I'll be done soon, we're getting ready to go to lunch. Coffee. Hi, hmm. I'm from Columbia. I ain't but one, well, there's a couple things good that come out of Columbia, just one I partake of. I used to partake of the other, but not no more. That's coffee. But here's what I want you to get. Every morning, every morning, I get into the presence of my Heavenly Father, and I sit down. And I invite my best friend to come and sit with me. Because if the Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Father has got something special in store for me today, I want to find out what it is. And the Holy Spirit knows the mind and the heart of the Father. Are you getting this? And so if I become intimate with him, he begins to reveal to me what daddy's got on his heart for me. 
How many of you here know that there's a divine appointment set up for you today? And it wasn't just coming to church. He wants to speak to you. And the way he speaks to you is through his spirit. And as we develop that intimacy with him, he can unpack what we need to know. He doesn't give us the total picture. We couldn't handle it. We couldn't handle it. But what he does do, he says, okay, son, this is what we got planned for you today. Stay close to me. Walk close to me. I got somebody I need you to talk to today. I got somebody that needs healing today. I got somebody that needs Jesus today. And I want you to talk to them. You'll see, you'll see them when you, when, when, you'll, you'll know them when you see them. What if all of us did that? Could we change the city? You better believe we could. And we don't even need to wait on the pastor to get there to help us. I love my pastor. But you know what? He's a man just like I am. He's listening to the same voice of God I am that I'm capable of hearing from if I will take the time to listen. Where are you at today? Como esta su vida con él? Yeah, I'm not talking in tongues. That was Spanish. I just simply said, how's your life today with him? Are you where you need to be? Or are you worshiping from a distance? You may be here this morning and may be thinking, I don't even know Jesus is my personal Savior. It's okay. You're in the right place at the right time. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment. And he's here to say, I need you. I want you. And I love you. Father, Lord, everything, Lord, that's been in our lives, Lord, that has hindered the relationship, everything that has got our attention other than you, Lord, we just lay that aside. And Lord, not just for this moment, but Lord, for this lifetime. But we just determine that we're going to be men and women that are hungry after you, pursuing your presence. On, on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday and on Thursday. Lord, every day of the week, Father. God, may we choose, Lord, the right people to be in our lives, to journey with. May we choose men that are passionate for your presence. May we choose right women, Father, that are passionate for your presence. May we bring around our lives, Lord, the right influences, Lord. Lord, may we, if we're not seeing what we're hoping for, may we let the Spirit of God, let your Spirit stir us to the place, Lord, Lord that we shine brightly in our workplace. Father, may we, may we be men and women, Father, that are hungry for you first and foremost. And Lord, that we begin to expect, Father, have expectation, Lord, that you're going to do something powerful in our families, in our workplaces, in our lives, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, today for hearts that are willing and vulnerable, that are hungry for you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, today that this journey cannot be accomplished by our might or by our power, but only through your only through your spirit, Father. Only through your presence, Lord. And so we rest in that, Father. We turn to you daily, Father. Moment by moment, Father. We say, Lord, we trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap at this point. Thank you, Jesus for who you are, for what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everyone that says yes to Jesus this morning. What a powerful step. Listen, today, I'm 
so thankful. We're so thankful to have Jack and Dolores with us. I want to encourage you to take a moment, grab one of their cards. On your way out, there, you'll have an opportunity just to bless them. If you've been blessed, whatever it is you want to bless them with, they're traveling, they're coming out of Columbia. Finances are, are much needed in this moment. We partner with them monthly, and uh, but I want to encourage you, I want to give you an opportunity to bless them today. So on your way out, uh, there will be a bucket, or the Paul will be holding in the back. You can bless them. And, but why don't you greet someone, give someone a high five, let them know you're glad that they're here. For those that want to go on our East East Tennessee mission trip to the Smoky Mountain Dream Center, if you have an interest in going with us next month to the Smoky Mountain Dream Center, just meet me in the conference room here in about five minutes. Love to go over some info about that. Have a wonderful day. God bless.